Forest rangers and campers, what are your unexplainable and downright creepy stories? Part 7. Please subscribe and like to show us your appreciation. Account 1. I was with a trail ranger following a search of marshland that was next to a national park. Backstory. We were on vacation from the UK, where I was working at the time, and we had basically had to go out to a company outing around Christmas time. As it was when we started to party, work day off, entire company from the US offices was there. We had noticed one member of the team got drunk and basically wandered off somewhere. So we had to call rangers to find him. Luckily, we were being guided by a trail ranger. Before anyone says anything, getting really drunk in a national park is never a good idea. Most of us had one or two beers, and that was it. This guy couldn't really handle his drink and also had way too much of the blue can stuff people nicknamed Redneck's Finest. Not sure of the particular beer, more suited to European beers in pint glasses rather than this canned stuff. We didn't find him for a while to the point it got dark, like really dark. So we had to get flashlights looking for the guy. After searching many hours, we managed to get a search team together. After several hours, it felt like someone was following me alone in a national forest with only a mobile to contact us. So basically, I got lost looking for the guy. Panic started to set in because I didn't know where the trail ranger had went a few miles beforehand. So alone. No idea where I was in marshland, walking on soil, a few tall trees in the distance. Along the way, I hear what sounds like footsteps. Muddy, like someone was walking behind me in the marsh. Turn the flashlight to face the noise. It stops. Continue walking. Hear it again. Stop. Turn around. Point flashlight. It stops. Start to get really nervous. Happens again. Get a sudden sense of dread, so shoot off running. Manage to reach the trees in the distance, heart pounding. I run into the guy we were searching for, along with the trail ranger, saying he had managed to track him told him what happened to me, told me that the place in the marsh was infested with alligators, and that's the sound they make when they creep up on people. Says I was either very brave or very stupid to walk there because people have been grabbed by them before. We managed to make it back to the hotel with the guy slurring his words and still very drunk. Park Ranger congratulates me on my balls to brave marshland. In reality, I didn't know and wouldn't have went there if I had known. Still think about how differently it might have ended if I had known about the alligators. The noise is there when they creep up on you. But when alligators see flashlights, they sometimes stop in the dark. Never knew that. Apparently, a thing. Account 2. Not a ranger like most of the posts in this thread. When I was around the age 8, we used to go camping in the forest behind my grandparents' house. This was their land and was entirely private property. One night we are out there and our oldest cousin is watching the fire and the second oldest is showing us how to pitch a tent when we hear a loud crack of a stick. We turned around to see a man in his 30s standing there 20 meters away from us. He was wearing ripped up clothing and a blue ball cap that was missing the rim. My cousin pulled out his pocket knife and the guy ran away. To this day I still don't know who it was but this man was obviously not in his right mind. Later that night, I woke up to a person walking around the tent. I began to panic and grabbed my cousin's knife and held on to it for dear life. I stayed quiet for what felt like forever, until finally the person went away. I later asked my parents if they had gone out to check on us, but they all said no. I have literally no clue who it was and probably never will. My guess was he was homeless and was deciding to camp in a forest. Count three. I am an Eagle Scout who used to camp a lot for scouting. A lot of the reservations have tons of random semi-formal dogs that just roam and are not aggressive. I don't know. Maybe the rangers have a lot of dogs that they let roam free. Some are more shady than others, and some will come up and let you pet them, beg for your food. Also, there are coyotes that you can hear calling out nightly from 2 a.m. to about 4 a.m. intermittently. Anyways, it was not uncommon to wake up in the middle of the night to what I want to hope was just the dogs sniffing at you from outside of the tent and poking the outside of the tent with their noses. Never found any footprints to show what it was. Probably because the ground was hard and leaves covered all the loose dirt on the ground. Not paranormal, 
but still unsettling to know that either a random dog or coyote was checking you out in the middle of the woods at night. Account 4. Not a lot of super creepy stuff in five years so far. My favorite story creep-wise isn't that creepy once you realize what it actually is versus your imagination running wild when walking up involves chanting and screaming from like 500 yards outside my park, think nine people screaming and crying, and one guy shouting about the end in Spanish over the screams. Then you remember the big apostolic church and group camp was really quiet. They had hiked off in the hills to speak in tongues and worship. Actually very considerate, it would have been much more disturbing to the campground had they done it in their sight. It was also far enough off-site where it would be weird for me to get involved, also stopping worship off-site. And if it were a crazy cult ritual, then that's a good way to die. Indiana Jones Temple of Doom style, I chatted with the customers at sites who could hear them and explained it to them. They were relieved, generally, that all was okay. And ultimately, the worship stopped around 1045, so it wasn't the most disruptive group. So no major problems at the end. Account 5. I'm not a ranger, but I want to share a story from when I was in high school. I was climbing a quite high mountain called Marapi in Indonesia. The mountain stands around 3,000 meters high. I climbed with a group of 20 people, five were trained climbers, and the rest were newbies like me. During our descent, we divided the 20 people into three groups. I was in the second group, and our intention was to stick together. However, some of the girls were quite slow, so my experienced friend and I decided to run ahead and leave them behind. The instructor gave us permission, and off we went. But then my friend said, Hey, I need to take care of something. You can continue alone. It's not far from here. It was noon, and the distance didn't seem significant. So I left him behind. However, as I continued, I found myself in an area filled with bamboo. Normally, the mountain is covered with typical rainforest trees, but this particular spot was densely populated with bamboo. The area formed a circle with a diameter of about 50 meters. Strangely, the way out that I had clearly seen before entering was no longer there. Panic set in. I tried to retrace my steps and wait for my friend, but even the entrance seemed to have vanished. I ran around for about two or three minutes until somehow the entrance reappeared and I waited for my friend. Account 6. Almost every night I hear coyotes howling. Just the other night I was taking a night walk with my dogs and had a bad feeling. I let my dogs lead me in front and I walked partially turned with my flashlight turned behind me so nothing could sneak up on me I think because the night was way too quiet it unnerved me. One of my dogs had her hackles raised as we got closer to home. As soon as we got inside and closed the door, a pack of coyotes started yowling in a mountainous area across the street from me. That didn't bother me, because I know the pack lives and hunts in that area. But the fact that an answering howl came from the direction we had just come from, that was a little more worrying. I haven't had much run-ins with mountain lions as they don't show themselves much, but I have a similar story. I was walking just one of my dogs, my very calm golden retriever. Suddenly he looked off into the distance and started growling. I didn't see anything, but there were a lot of bushes around. I should have turned around, but I kept walking. A few feet later I found mountain lion tracks. I noped right out. Account 7. Not a ranger here. Was on a cadet weekend six or so years ago at Thetford Training Ground, East Anglia, UK. Has been a training ground for a good century. And a bit so, lots of history to the area. However, haven't found much evidence of any notable haunting in the area. Had a really good time, but a few slightly weird things happened, which no one was able to explain. No large native animals other than the odd fox or badger, but they tend to steer generally clear due to the nature of the exercises. Military. So involve gunfire, quite diverse landscape for England with open spaces, pine trees with large open clearings, shrubs dotted across the place, etc. Five of us cadets were on patrol through the pine tree covered areas on the outskirts of a big plain clearing around three square km. Only distinguishable feature was a large mound in the middle of this clearing. Anyway, one of us shouts a stand to, and in excitement and slight confusion as to what he could have seen, we all eagerly take a position. Laid pointing my rifle in same general direction as everyone else looking for the threat, 
Enko then tells us how he saw a figure on top of the mound and that it was probably the sergeant testing us. So we vigilantly go over low and behold, there is no one. Remember the NCO, who was only 16, I was about 13 at the time, being very creeped out. 13-year-old me was slightly amused but mainly just ecstatic at being out in the woods, no adults and with rifles. No magazines, though. Ha <laughs> ha. Could he have been fucking with us, of course, but something tells me he probably wasn't. Later on, we set up camp in a lightly forested area and get on sentry duties. I took one of the first watches and felt very creeped out, as if I was being watched. I had my rifle with me, giving me a weird sense of confidence, so brushed it off and lay there for a few hours. Later on in the night, another sentry orders a stand to, and we all hear rustling in the bushes. Pretty loud and we're all a little spooked. The adults go and investigate and come back telling us it's a rogue sheep from a nearby farm. Ha ha. Anyway, fast forward to the bus back and they tell us they never found the exact cause of this noise, but didn't want to scare us by admitting that last night. One of the adults also told me later she's always found that ground creepy. This woman is pretty fucking nails and never appeared to be scared by much, but admitted that she once was walking back to camp at night and swore she was being followed by footsteps that stopped when hers did. She really never took any jokes well and did not have much of a sense of humor. But still, maybe she was fucking with us all along, and this was an elaborate prank. However, she was not the sort to do this, ha ha ha, not essentially too creepy, but still slightly out of the norm. Account 8. My friend told me this. They were in a cabin that had bars around the windows. I was right above them upstairs asleep. They were cuddling or having sex when they saw a leg suddenly start hanging from a tree. This was about 23 a.m. A tiny Indian man jumps down from the tree. He grabs the bared fence and just stares at them. Blank-faced staring. My friends were just staring at him back in shock. They said it was so scary. How long was he in that tree? Was he watching them having sex? Anyways, they debated to call the cops, but they would get in huge trouble for being in each other's rooms. After about 10 minutes of this fucking creep staring at them about five feet away, just a bared fence and a screen in between them, he unbuttons his pants, pulls his dick out and takes a piss and disappears into the darkness of unknown.